about two o'clock in the afternoon. Really on this stand, what we're hoping to key on is there's a big sand hill across this valley, maybe 400 yards, and there's a bunch of north facing cuts that go off that backside. And uh, ideally, that's exactly where a coyote's gonna be bedded up with this south wind. So we're gonna set up right here. We're gonna call out across this. The, the volume of the revolution is not an issue whatsoever. It'll carry clear over to the top of that hill, you know, eight, 900, over a thousand yards over there. And, and that's ideally of where we're hoping the coyote's gonna come from. We could have something come from directly from the south. Um, I'm gonna be set up to kill that. Matt's downwind about 50, 60 yards. He's gonna cover that backside in case something comes up on top up here and, uh, and tries to get downwind on us. I'm gonna go ahead and start this stand off with some female lone howls, some star zero one. About six minutes in now. I'm gonna get some volume out there now. I don't know for sure if that sound got quite over that hill. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crank it up with one of these fights here. Get a little more aggressive, put a little more volume into it and make sure we're getting all the coverage we want here. Skyline. One, two, three of them. Here we go, boy, that one's hauling yep. the mail there. Oh, there's two more, two more high coming off right behind him. They're liking the sound. I'm gonna keep it going right now. If they hang up, I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna switch back to stuck fight, which is originally what I think brought him off the hill. Here they come. Swing out in front of Matt on top here. There they are, right in that saddle. How lucky is that? That does not happen very often when you both pick out different coyotes and shoot at the almost the exact same time. You know we got them both, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I looked up here at you, and you weren't quite in your gun, and I thought, well. He's got to see him, and so I was like, well, I'll shoot that left one, and maybe he'll be on the right one, and somehow we timed it. We both shot at the same exact time. I can't they're both laying there about eight feet from each other. We couldn't have been set up more perfect. Nice, looks like a couple nice looking kayaks yeah. again, too. Once again, we got about a 50 yard walk back to the truck. Yeah, we'll just go get the truck. We're gonna head that way anyway, and let's drive down there and pick them up. Can't, you couldn't even have planned that one out like that. Oh, that's a big male. He does have a little bit of mange. Yeah, yeah. Look at big that. Big female. Oh. Boy, that's a furred up coyote out there, man. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. I always find it interesting. I always like to look back at my stand, especially when you get down here to where the coyotes were. We were tucked in good. You know, you were sitting, had that big yucca behind you. The thing about it was, I didn't realize until we got back to the truck, if these coyotes would have actually went up that hill about another 30, 40 yards, <laughs> they probably would have seen the truck, but. You know, we really weren't anticipating anything come straight downwind anyway, but we got lucky and it paid off.
Man, we're on top of the world up here. The one really cool thing I like about the sand hills is the, the variety of terrain you get out here. You know, what you get out here, as you can see across this landscape, you'll get pockets of hills. And then as it drops off from the hill country, you'll get a wet meadow a lot of times. And, and that's where you'll have the rush beds, the thicker, taller grass. So in that variance, you get coyotes that'll hang down in that, those what I like to call maybe a transition area where, where it's a little bit easier to hunt, a lot more prey species down there. And then in the, in the middle part of the day when the wind picks up, they move up into these hills and these choppy set of hills where they can get in and out of the wind up in these yuccas and things like that. And that's exactly what we've been keen on the last, uh, you know, four, five, six stands throughout the middle part of the day is stuff like that. You know, this terrain is just something else. If you haven't experienced it, man, this is a, something, something to see. You know, the cool part about this revolution is this detachable base. This quarter 20 base actually just slides right in here. So it'll attach to any tripod. I just bought this tripod off Amazon, 20 bucks. It's adjustable, I can get it up high. The, the great thing about getting a call up high is it's gonna carry, the wind's gonna carry further. I can get it above the grass. If you wanna use the camera feature, you're able to scan and little, get a little bit better view with the thing. The other one, this is self, kind of a self-leveling tripod. Really easy to get it level. And now I can revolve this call. I like to always tuck it up behind a little bit of cover like this so the coyote doesn't quite see a, you know, a big tripod on the stand. But uh, hopefully on this stand, we'll get, them, we'll get them coming right here. We're gonna be off to the side. And anytime you can get it off to the side where the coyotes are looking over there and you're off to the side, you're gonna be better off. So do your work. Here we go, here we go, two. A pair of them, they're coming hard, they're coming hard. Streaking out on the hill. Damn, he got him. And I could not find that coyote out there, but I heard the bullet whap. He had to been on that far hill out there. I don't know how far there is, a long ways. But I heard the impact. Come walking yeah, Matt's giving me the thumbs up. <laughs> Another double. Now the hard part's, gonna, that grass is tall. It's gonna be tough finding him out there. Yeah, mine's on that knoll right out there. Kind of guessed in between 350 what? and What? That's only 380. Come on. You got to let him get up past 400 for well, you. He was going to be out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot, man. When you're shooting at a broadside coyote, I really try to put it right up on the shoulder. A lot of guys don't prefer that because you only have just a little bit of room for air. But if you hit them right there, they'd usually drop dead. You know, this coyote, I hit him just a little bit behind the shoulder which did get the back of his lungs, his liver, um, and that's usually what they'll run, but usually they're bleeding well enough that uh, you can find them. But man, just a couple, another couple nice yep, big coyotes. Yes, yeah, the female paired up. Well, that's a big coyote there, isn't it? Hey, we're on the roll. What's that, <laughs> our third double of the day. Tis the season, it's late season, you know. Um, thing about hunting these coyotes late season is, you know, there's less coyotes now, obviously, than there was three or four months ago. Coyotes have been shot off, manged, hit by cars, whatnot. But the coyotes that are left now are paired up, so usually, uh, you know, coyotes are far and few between, but when you do get into them, usually they're bunched up. As we've seen today, we've had a couple pairs come in, we've had a triple and then another pair. Um, so when you get on them, usually the action is usually hot and heavy. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to, to get most everything killed that we've called in today, so. Sunset, and let's, uh, Man, I think we've got time for at least one more stand. Right. Who knows, I don't know if I've ever killed four doubles in a day. We'll try it. Nice. Coming around.
around the corner. There's one. There comes two. Three. Oh, fourth, fourth. So I was on this, I was on this close one that was coming to the yeah, ball. Yeah, that's what I thought you were. And, and he stopped right here, right when, you, right when you shot, did you shoot one on the other side of the fence? I shot one, there was one that was circling down here and I heard you whoop, so I figured he was gonna stop, so I figured we were gonna maybe shoot at the same time yeah. again, but. So just as I'm getting ready to shoot, you shoot, and like, I had already like started to squeeze and that coyote went and I missed him. And then, and then I was on him right when he was in the gate and you beat me to it and you killed him. And then that one and I said, come running back across and roll. So we got three, right? Three and that, we damn near had that other one. Well, Matt, buddy, good shooting on that last stand, man. That was uh, pretty much cherry on top, wasn't it? Pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've had, a, we had a phenomenal day. We killed three doubles and a single. Uh, this stand, you know, we, we specifically made a drive for this stand. You've made it in the past. Um, and you knew exactly right where they come. You know, usually when you get on these stands, there's a reason a coyote's always in a certain pocket or certain area. And it was no different on this stand. These coyotes came rolling around, bullets started flying, <laughs> chaos ensued, <laughs> and uh, we got them, man. So just a, just a great day, uh, late season coyotes, lots of vocals, lots of fights, lots of just coyote based sounds today. That was really the key, I think, but uh, we got them all picked up and you're gonna have one hell of a fur check. Well, thanks again, buddy. Appreciate you having me out today. Awesome hunt, awesome hunt.